When we talk about the Earth's crust, we can broadly sort it into two categories, oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust is, of course, a crust that is directly beneath the ocean, so you'd usually have water overlying this. And then the continental crust is the stuff that makes up our continents. Because the ocean covers much more of the Earth's surface, if you've ever looked at the Earth from space or, you know, satellite photographs, the Earth is mostly blue, right? So, of course, oceanic crust makes up a majority of the Earth's crust. And there are a couple of key differences I'd like to highlight between these two. First, let's start with just a picture here. Uh, this is very basic, very not to scale. But a couple of things to talk about here is some of the features we might have. With continental crust on the edges here, of course, these are on the continents, so you'll have things like mountains or volcanoes. You know, one of these might be a volcano, maybe got a little... uh little ash cloud coming out there. Likewise over here, continent, right? All the things that you'd associate with continents that you see in your day-to-day -day life on land, we would associate with continental crust. Oceanic crust down here, that's under the water, so you might not see it every day, but there are a couple of interesting features here too. At divergent plate boundaries, we'll have rift zones. Uh, this is a mid-ocean ridge here where seafloor is actively being formed. Magma is going to be spilling out. Uh, you can have things like trenches, and then of course, thinking about our plate tectonics, you also have where oceanic crust interacts with continental crust at the boundaries of two different plates, you can have things like subduction zones. So that's just very high level, some of the features we might see. Now I want to go into four categories specifically and give a general comparison of these two different types of crust. So these are rock types, age, thickness, and density. Starting with the rock type, the big difference to note here is continental crust is going to have mostly felsic, felsic rocks and some intermediates. And oceanic crust is going to have mostly mafic rocks. And now felsic versus mafic, right? These are kind of weird terms. Felsic means it, it comes from the combination of feldspars and silicates or silica. Mafic comes from magnesium and iron. Uh, the thick is from ferric, which is, is whatever root that is for iron, right? And so those words might not mean much, but the thing to remember is felsic are usually the lighter colored rocks. So things like if we're looking at continental crust, the two that you should know here as far as igneous rocks go, which are the ones that make up the most of the rock, most of the crust, right? Igneous are the original rocks that formed from magma that was the result of heat during the Earth's initial formation, right? All other rock types are derivative from igneous. But the two igneous rock types we're going to see a lot of are granite and rhyolite. And granite is the stuff that forms. It's got big crystals, so it'll form intrusively when magma cools beneath the surface. Rhyolite forms extrusively when magma becomes lava and spills out onto the surface and has a much shorter time to cool, so it forms much smaller crystals. You should have some idea of what granite looks like, especially granite's one we talk about a lot, both for, you know, granite quarries, granite countertops. It's a, it's a household name goes as far as rock types. Rhyolite, maybe not so much. That's a nice pink igneous rock, fine-grained, as I said. And then on the mafic side, once again, these rocks are pretty general, but basalt, you've probably heard of that one. That is the equivalent of rhyolite. It's going to spill out at the surface of the oceanic crust. So during one of these, like I showed here, one of these spreading centers, right, basalt is going to be what's forming out here mostly because the mineral composition of this magma down here is entirely mafic. It's going to have a lot of darker, heavier minerals. And then gabbro is what's going to form if it's given more time to cool down underneath. So mafic versus felsic, very general there. You can break this down much further. Um, and then, of course, at the continents, a lot of times we'll also have intermediate rocks. Some of that might be in the oceanic crust as well, but the oceanic crust is primarily, especially basalt is a big one to know, at the surface, that's what's going to be getting formed. And this all has to do, right, rocks are just composed of minerals. And so this has to do with something called Bowen's reaction series, which has to do when di with when different minerals settle out of the magma melt, right? So the minerals, you know, the silicates and, and feldspars and micas that make up 
these rocks are going to be settling out of the melt at much lower temperatures. It takes much more cooling to settle these ones out, which is why they don't appear down low in that oceanic crust. They have to many times migrate up through the continental crust in order to form. Meanwhile, these ones are going to be the ones that settle out at much higher temperatures. So that's the rock type. In terms of the age, this should be pretty intuitive. Going back to our picture, the oceanic crust is where stuff is forming, right? This is stuff that's actively forming in the middle. So if some lava spills out here and cools, you have new rock that is formed and is effectively zero years old. It's baby rock. So you might think of it as a little line here that starts, this represents zero years of age, right? This is new rock. And then as you go outwards, you get older and older. But also the thing about oceanic crust, let's say that this is a subduction zone here, right? It's going under. If you recall from plate tectonics, the oceanic crust always goes beneath the continental crust. And because of this, oceanic crust can't get that old, right? As long as there are continents, the oceanic crust will always subduct beneath the continental crust at one of these plate boundaries. So while the oceanic crust can get old as you go further and further away from the spreading center, it's ultimately limited because the fate of all oceanic crust is to eventually be subductive, subducted and then reborn at one of these spreading centers. So ultimately what this means is that the age of oceanic crust is usually only on the order of, obviously this, this is a range, it can go from zero years as I discussed, right at the center, but maybe on average it's within the hundreds of millions of years. Okay, and to us we say, well that's, that's really old, right? A hundred million years to a human is a huge amount of time. But geologically, maybe not so much, because when we look at the continental crust, which isn't being subducted and was formed much longer ago. Now, obviously, with continental crust, we can look at things like a volcanic eruption, right? If we go back to our volcano right here and say that this thing erupts and it forms a layer of ash, which then gets consolidated into tuff and then forms a little rock layer around it, right? An igneous rock layer that what would be coming out of the volcano might solidify into rhyolite because it is extrusive. Well, that would be new as well, you'd say. So, you know, you can have young continental crust that erupts from some, you know, some magma body down here that's been here for a long time. It feeds up into it. So, okay, that would be a case where we have young continental crust. But because so much of it just sticks around for so long, the only mechanisms we have for getting rid of this continental crust, for the most part, is going to be erosion. You know, and there are plenty of cases where erosion has done a huge amount of damage to the original, what we had, uh, the original rock profile, and we lose huge amounts of time, huge amounts of geologic time because of this erosion. Those are called unconformities. But because erosion is much less destructive than something like subduction, and it happens in a much less cyclic pattern, continental crust is on average much older. And I'm just realizing now that I flipped these two. Oops. I was looking at oceanic first. About 100s of millions of years on the oceanic. And then on the continental, we scratch that out. Because it sticks around for so much longer, we'll say it's on the order of billions of years, right? On average, maybe it's around 2 billion years old. And you'd say, well, wow, a billion is... 10 times as much as 100 million, right? And I'd say you're exactly right. That is getting to be a lot more significant in terms of geologic time, right? The Earth's around 4.5 billion years old. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Now, the next thing to note is thickness. And I drew this, I think, pretty representatively. I'll start with continental this time so I don't get mixed up. Continental crust is, of course, thicker because it's not getting destroyed because it's not at the spreading center, obviously the, the thickness here is also incredibly thin. If we're having access to the mantle, then at this point, we're effectively at thickness zero as well. We're at zero years of age and zero, insert your favorite unit of distance here, miles, meters, kilometers, 
zero distance, whatever you want to call it. And because of that, oceanic crust builds up and it pushes out. The convection currents are acting down here. It's moving. But it can't get that thick, right? Ultimately, it's going to subduct again before it can build up too much. It's moving much more than these continental than this continental crust is, which is within the stable, usually stable interiors, and then what we would call more active margins. There are passive margins as well. I said I was going to start with continental, but I just couldn't help myself. I went over to oceanic a little bit. So let me make sure I put it on the right size side. Oceanic crust is in general going to be thinner. How much thinner? Well, oceanic crust, we might say in terms of miles, I don't know, it's on the order of one through 10 miles thick. Technically zero, because you can start, like I said, at that very center. But that's the kind of order of magnitude we're dealing with. And then continental crust is going to be thicker, right? A lot less destroying it there. It can really build up. You can have mountain building events that push it upwards, give it more thickness, dig some roots down into it. So this is going to be on the order of probably, you know, anywhere between maybe 10 and 50 miles thick. So once again, what we see with continental, oceanic will say maybe about, let's give these some nice concrete numbers, maybe about three and then maybe about 30 here. So just like continental crust is maybe 10 times as old as oceanic crust on average, it's maybe 10 times thicker on average. And again, these are all averages, just general sorting. Finally, we come to, if we can peek it out here, density. So this one I just like to throw in here because it's important to understand the relationship between the densities of these things when we talk about things like subduction. So basic science, right? Stuff that is less dense will end up on top of stuff that is more dense. So this is why subduction works the way it does, right? Because continental crust is less dense than oceanic crust. And we can get into the specific gravities of them specifically, whatever the rock ranges are. For a lot of continental crust, you know, granitic rocks, the specific gravity will be around maybe 2.65, 2.7. Uh, oceanic crust, it's going to be a little bit bigger. I'm not here to give specific numbers on this one because it's such a huge range, right? It depends on the exact composition of your rock type. It depends on sometimes how that rock compresses together and how it how it reacts when it's you know, stacked up together versus a rock on its own in just a laboratory setting. My rock mechanics videos are probably useful for that. But continental crust is going to be less dense and oceanic crust is going to be more dense. And that is the mechanism that drives subduction, that change, that difference in density the more dense plate will sink below the less dense plate. And that's how you can remember, oceanic crust will always be the one that subducts. And of course, you can talk about things like, sometimes in oceanic crust, you'll have convergent plate boundaries with two oceanic plates. And you might want to know which one is subducting. Well, look at individually between those two plates, which one is older, which one is denser, and you could probably figure out which one's going to be destroyed. There is a correlation in oceanic crust. Usually the older stuff is also going to be more dense. It's had more time to solidify and, and compact itself and become a lot more dense. So this is just a brief overview, like I said, but rock types, continental crust, usually felsic. You'll have granite and rhyolite primarily. Some intermediates in there as well, diorite, andesite but we don't need to go into that. Mafic, mostly basalt and gabbro. The age, continental crust, billions of years. Oceanic crust, only maybe hundreds of millions of years. These are averages. They could be zero as well. They could be very young, newly, freshly formed. The thickness, continental crust in general, much thicker, maybe an order of magnitude more thick. And density, oceanic crust, usually more dense. The way I first learned this was, I remember quite well, it was that Oceanic crust is the one that you would want to date, right? Because younger, okay, check that one off. Thinner, okay, it might be politically incorrect or, or unfashionable to say that in 2020, but thinner is usually better. <laughs> uh, and density, more dense. I didn't understand that one at first. I was like, more dense? What do you mean, like stupid? Uh, 
And then uh, my teacher clarified, more dense as in uh, muscle, right? Muscle weighs more than fat. So a, a dense body means a nice, you know, compact, a muscular, uh, <laughs> muscular body. So I kind of liked that. That's a nice, quick and easy way to remember it. Uh, and then I guess for rock types, you know, if, if you're going for a, that nice, you know, got that nice tan going on, right? Then mafic, you would say, is darker than felsic. Uh, that one's really getting into some dangerous territory. That's just all preferences, right? But anyways, I feel like I've gone on long enough about these two. Uh, oceanic crust versus continental crust. That is the brief overview.